This is going to be a rather lengthy lesson on how to conjugate the optative mood. So the optative is a mood like the subjunctive or like the indicative or like the imperative, uh, and it's only found in the present. I'll write these down for you. The, the present, the future, the aorist, and the perfect. We won't worry about the perfect here. Uh, I will tell you that the future is pretty uh, infrequent, uh, but by and large, the way you conjugate the optative is you're going to add an iota to the stem, and you're going to use the secondary endings. So there's actually going to be a couple of sets of endings. So the, the main ones you'll see are ending in me, sigma, nothing, men, te, and n, and in the there's also going to be an alternate set for this, which are going to be called long, and they're going to be an, or really ain, ace, a, amen, eta, ason. So we've got these long sets. This is the standard over here, standard, and here are the long. And then we're going to have the middle passive endings, which are going to be, since it's secondary endings, main, so, to, and you'll find that this interval calyx signal will drop out, metha, ste, and into. So we'll have our active endings, standards and long versions, and then we'll have the middle and passives. So let's take a look at how we conjugate. We'll start with the present. Remember, that iota is going to be your marker. If you see an iota uh, be between the stem and the ending, you know you're probably dealing with the subjunctive. So we'll t start with luo. So we have our uh, theme vowel, iota, and mi. Luoi mi, luois, luoi. Right, all of these are going to have this theme vowel, omicron. Luoimen, luoite, luoyen. So there's our endings, mi, sigma, nothing men, te, n, and the iota marks it. And in the middle and passive for the present, same thing. We're going to use our theme vowel, omicron, luoi main, and our iota main luoiso, which is luoi so, drop off the sigma, and we get luoio, luoito, luoimetha, luoiste, luointo. So middle passive secondary endings, with the iota as the marker. In the future, same thing. Right, so now the stem, loose, omicron, the iota uh, is the marker again for the optative, and there are endings. So luoimi, luois, lusoi, or lusois, lusoi, lusoimen, lusoita, lusoia. So this is a, a fairly regular system going on here, at least for the present and futures. Uh, and in the middle, lusoimen, lusoyo, that's going to again be our theme vowel, our iota marker, our ending, and the interval calyx sigma drops out, so lusoyo, lusoito, lusoimetha, lusoista, lusointo. Very standard system. And if we take a look then also at the future passive, we're going to have to take our sixth principal part, drop off the epsilon augment, Add our sigma to the stem, our theme vowel, our iota marker, and our endings, middle passive endings. So, luthe soime, luthe soyo. And again, that's an interval calic sigma dropping out there. Luth, that should be a luthe soito. Luthe soimetha, luthe stoista, and luthe sointo. So, if we just take a look at these two, the basic rule is going to be stem, theme vowel, Iota, and ending. Not too hard yet. The weak aorist, things get a little bit uh, dodgy here. So we get lusime, which aorist stem, and notice there is no augment. Right? No augment. Can't emphasize that enough. The augment only shows up in the indicative. So lusime, we've got our 
stem, the alpha as the theme vowel, the iota, and the ending. And then, in these two forms, there's this alternate long ending. Uh, it's slightly different long ending. This is more common in this. This ending here is more common in Attic Greek. So it loose eas or lusais, which is what you'd expect. But uh, in Attic Greek, luseas, lusea, with the movable nu, or lusai, so what you'd expect. The more common lusea, lusaima, exactly what you'd expect, lusaita, and luseon or lusayan. Uh, now what's happened here is uh, this is what you would expect. But in fact, uh, this is what has happened here is we have uh, sort of an alternate ending, which has been the epsilon and the alpha have shifted spaces. So uh, this is more common in Attic Greek. So lusaime, luseas, lusea, lusaimen, lusaita, luseon. In the middle, no problems, perfectly regular. So our eris stem, Iota sub uh, alpha theme vowel, Iota mood marker, and then our endings. So Lusaimen, Lusayo, alpha intervocalic sigma drops out, Lusaito, Lusaimatha, Lusaista, Lusaito. And then in the passive, we're going to use uh, two different sets of endings. So the first one, we're going to take our sixth principal part, add our Iota marker, and our endings. These are the long endings in the singular. I'm going to use the longs in the singular. And this isn't actually that unusual for Greek, right? We saw this in with uh, me verbs. That is the long endings. The long stem shows up in the singular, but it goes to a short stem in the plural. That's what happens here traditionally in Attic Greek. So luthein, luthees, luthee. But in the plural, we can use either the short ending, we can continue with the long endings, luthein, luthe eta, luthe eson, or shift to the shorts. So these are the shorts. This is common to shift to the shorts. So luthemen, lutheta, luthein. The endings that you'd expect. Men, te, en, iota, on the stem. The strong aorist. Again, no augment, but just like the present tense, we're going to take our stem, theme vowel, iota, and ending. So la boimi, la bois, la boy. La boyman, la boita, la boyen. Perfectly regular. So far, all we've seen is that the weak aorist has some strange things going on. In the middle, la boymen, stem, theme vowel, iota, ending. La boyo, la boito, la boymatha, la boista, la bointo. So the strong aorist is perfectly regular. It has that rule of stem, theme vowel, iota, and ending. Now, contract verbs verbs are a little dodgy. They have both strong long endings and short endings. Uh, the long ending is the short common in the plural. So let's take a look at the, uh, and, and notice that epsilon and omicron contracts are identically formed. So we're going to take our ending, philo, add iotis, iota ending, and the long ending. So philoyen, philoyes, philoye, or what you'd expect, philoimi, philois, philoi, and it's going to be circumflex because there is a contraction going on here. And then shift to the short version, philoimen, philoite, philoien, the endings you'd expect, or stick with the long ones, philoiemen, philoiete, philoieson. In general, long in the singular, short in the plural. The middle passives uh, for present contract verbs, perfectly regular, stem, theme vowel, iota, ending. Philoimen, philoio, philoito, philoimetha, philoista, philointo. Uh, we have this circumflex going on here because we have a contraction. So that epsilon or omicron is being contracted out. So middle passive is regular except for that uh, contraction that's going on. The present has these two alternate endings. Same with the alpha contracts. Now the difference here is that the iota, the stem marker, is going to be contracted down into an iota subscript. So the, the iota, that's the marker of the optative, gets dropped down. So timoen, timoes, timoe, long endings because it's singular, regular shorts, uh, short endings, 
Timomi, Timos, Timo are what exactly what you'd expect, but with a contraction. In the plural, the shorts are common, Timomen, Timote, Timoen. But there are also those longs, Timoemen, Timoete, Timoesa. So the way to mark these is to say, ah, there's an iota in there with this, so there's a contraction, but the iota is still there. In the middle passives, exactly what you'd expect, but with this contraction where the iota drops into to the alpha and the theme vowel, form to uh, combine to form the omega, with the iota of the optative dropping into uh, the subscript. So, timoimen, timoo, timoto, timometha, timosthe, timonto. B verbs, didomi. Uh, commonly, the long version in the singular and short in the plural. This is for the present. So, didoyen, didoyes, didoye, ain, ace, a. You've still got the iota. Didoymen, didoyte, didoyen. Or the long versions, didoyemen, didoyete, didoyesan. Long singular, short plural. Middle passive, perfectly normal. Didoymen, didoyo, didoito, didoymetha, didoyste, didointo. Again, you're still going to see that iota. That's your marker. Look to that. In the aorist, same rule, long in the singular. Doyen, doyes, doye. Remember, the aorist has only the simple stem. And in the plural, short, doymen, doite, doyen. Or the long versions, doyemen, doyete, doyesan. In the middle, doyemen, doyo, doito, doymetha, doyes, the dointo. Perfectly regular, stem, iota, ending. Tithemi. Very, very similar, long in the singular, short in the plural. Tithayen, tithayes, tithaye, tithayemen, tithayte, tithayen, or with the long version, tithayemen, tithayete, tithayesan. Still having that iota marking it. So we'll see those long versions show up in me verbs and contracts, but otherwise we're going to stick theete, theen, and in the plural, uh, we can have the short or the long version. In the middle, perfectly regular. Theen, themen, theo, theto, themetha, theste, thento. Histemi, same thing, but instead of the epsilon, we have the alpha. So histiaen, it's the long version, histiaes, histiae. Histaimen, histaita, histaien, short version, or the long version, histaiemen, histaiete, histaiesan. And the middle passives, stem, iota, ending. The aorist, that should be histemi. We're dropping the hi. So, stiaen, stiaes, stiae, long version in the singular. Stiaemen, stiaita, stiae. The, the short version in the plural. There's our long versions. In the middle, perfectly regular. Stem, iota, ending. Stem, iota, ending. With the intervocalic signal dropping out. Stem, iota, ending. Stymetha, stysthe, steinto. Stem, iota, ending. So the takeaway, I think, from all of this is to know your endings. Know that there are two different versions of the, uh, of the present endings the long version and the short version. The short version is much more common. And then remember to look for that iota. If you see that iota, probably, most likely, almost definitely, dealing with it.